Well, Mike, um, we'd like to hear if you want to add on to that, but we also um, really are eager to hear kind of from your perspective as someone who's for the first time been sitting in a library seat after years of probably managing with great difficulty, your library directors. We'd like to hear um, your perspective and what, you, what you've what you learned and what you'd like to share with us. Well, thanks, I really appreciate that. Uh, I would like to echo the, what Jerry said about change. Um, I have not been in the business as long as Jerry, but darn near. Um, and uh, it, this, is a, this is what I would call, if you've ever read the book, a black swan event for local government, uh, at least in the state of California. Uh, it wasn't an easy book to read, but if you read it, uh, the essence of that, that whole theory that he put together is that the events that are occurring, the tragedy that occurs, the change that occurs, it, in retrospect was predictable. And I think this situation that the state of California has put itself in, that the local governments have put themselves in, um, has not uh, been um, something that fell out of the sky. Basically, to a great degree, um, we can no longer, as public employees, uh, be afforded. We have a revenue problem, but we also have a cost problem. And so I'm facing that currently right now in the Richmond Library. Um, we have a, a heavily unionized situation uh, that has been going through reductions for five or six years. And generally speaking, the effort has been to spare uh, employees, avoid layoffs. And so as you do that, you all know what happens. The collection uh, funds go from $800,000 to $90,000 when I walked in the door. Um, you have employees who are uh, heavily unionized, who've been there for 20, 30 years, have bumping rights. Uh, to a great degree, it's the newbies who we rely on to get things done. They're the younger talent. They're the ones who are risk takers. They're the innovators. And the problem ends up that when you can't do layoffs, or if you have to do layoffs, you lose the newbies. And so that's a situation I'm sure that is maybe exaggerated in Richmond, but I'm sure is present in a lot of these unionized situations. Very difficult to deal with, and we've been struggling with that. So what I tried to do when I walked in the library, which was built in the early 50s, and smells like it was, um, hasn't changed. I walked back in time, because I grew up in San Leandro. San Leandro Library was built a little later, but by the same token, as you all know, I'm sure, uh, has gone through an evolution, uh, actually a revolution that was pretty substantially created when I was there as manager. Um, the San Leandro Library, as Jerry said, uh, has become uh, a center, uh, Centreville, if you will, for the city of San Leandro in many ways. Uh, at uh, one point, we were holding farmer's markets there. We had an active cafe. There's food. Uh, all of the Chamber of Commerce events occur there. Uh, there were outreach efforts to all parts of the community. Uh, a lot of funds went into that building, but more importantly, we augmented the collection and sort of provided side money to make sure that the collection kept up. And generally speaking, a foundation was created 20 plus years ago uh, that has substantial resources. And a lot of that was came off the friends. I mean, quite frankly, well, good investment, but a, a lot of funding came into that library. So it has a, a much different status, say, than today in the Richmond Library has. Um, so I think dealing with the Richmond Library situation and the immediacy of the shortfall, I tried to walk into the library uh, in a number of different um, mindsets. And so what I looked at it as, as an experience, uh, was if I owned it, it was a private sector entity, and how would I try and staff this entity so that it served the community and it provided cost-effective services? And in the Richmond Library, they redid the checkout area for the children's section, which is in a separate room. And every child who checks out a book in the Richmond Library today uses the automated checkout. Flip your card, do your thing, out the door. But you look at our main library and the circulation side has a circulation clerk sitting there. And there's a book, checkout, automated checkout, right next to them, but nobody uses it. So we provide that face-to-face -face service. Our clients. <laughs> I figure if an eight-year-old can do it, every adult can do it too. So just that sort of apparent, transparent sort of how does this work look uh, is perhaps something that hasn't occurred in that library before. The second area is reference. We have a couple of branches. We've been making cuts with short librarians. Can you open a branch without a librarian there? How do you provide your resources back to the home ship, you know, and, and the whole thing. Well, we're gonna Skype them in. That reference librarian does not have to be 
present in that branch, in my opinion, to have them Skype in and answer the question. Um, I am a believer of that. So we're looking at the library in those different terms, um, and it's revolutionary. Part-timers, we have part-timers who, uh, generally speaking, who work less than 25 hours a week who don't get benefits. If they work 25 hours a week, they get benefits. They cost 25000 if they don't have it, and they cost 45000 if they do. That's one hour a week difference, $20,000. That's, to me, that's, that's huge. That's huge. It's a cost, it's, it's a cost center that is, adds up, because everybody there is working 25. I can't guarantee it to get the full-time benefits. So those sorts of looks at it, as, at it from a different perspective, um, I'm hoping will help us as a library look at what the transactions cost. We have acquisitions, we have TP, we have $90,000 worth of materials coming through the door here. I, I'm asking, the, what does it cost to process that? It's pretty high, isn't it? I mean, it's just insane, actually. But, <laughs> so my point is, uh, not that the, it's the Richmond Library, but it's the opportunity for me to get back in the field, in the trenches with what I've benefited from, and I'm sure Jerry would say this too, it's a huge benefit to go from city to city, to county, to entity, and see how they do it differently and then try and have an objective view when you walk in the door as if you weren't constrained um, by the history of the place or by the sort of institutions that have, have established the way it is. So it's, it's interesting, it's exciting. Uh, Richmond is having some more fiscal issues this year as everybody is. And um, again, they asked us not to lay anybody off and I was appropriately inappropriate and sent the right recommendation in, so I'll probably get canned and <laughs> be looking for some more work in a while. But anyway, it's been fun. It has been fun. The staff is wonderful. They've been under siege for years and trying to motivate them, to keep them focused and still be honest with them. It's not an easy thing. Um, I'm concerned that in the longer term, the amount of change that's going to occur as a result of post-retirement benefits, retirement costs, lack of revenue is going to continue to haunt us for a long time. Well, uh, that's really interesting. This is a second, another question for both of you. Um, kind of from a library director's point of view, is do you have um, some insight into how we as directors can be more effective um, within our city at the department head table and with our city managers? Um, to, I, I think sometimes, well, so sometimes we have talents that go unrecognized and underutilized. Sometimes we actually act like the outliers ourselves and don't, step up and participate. So that's my um, kind of perspective from many years of being in both two different cities. But I wondered what kind of specific advice, perspective you have, insight, and advice you have for us to make us more effective. And go ahead and start. Uh, okay. Um, well, I, you know, I, effectiveness is, is almost an individual thing. It's like yeah. it depends on your skill sets and what you're comfortable with and what, you're, what you've been taught. Um, and what your opportunities are. Um, and so that's the set of constraints we all start with. Um, every leader has, has constraints on his or her leadership role. Um, the most, it's, it, if you think about a, a department head in a city or a county, now it's different if you're in a, a special district and you've got a board to worry about and you're not a part of a, a larger enterprise, although you obviously have relationships and so on that are important, but if you're part of a general purpose local government, city or county, um, you are a leader among leaders. Uh, every department head leads, it leads an institution. So you have a responsibility to that institution and the scope of your work or your role is normally described around your leadership of that institution. 